Welcome everyone to our Hour of Power. Our special guest today is the lovely Dion Wiley from Queensland. Uh, Dion joined Juice Plus in December 2014 and reached NMD only 18 months later, just in time to be recognised at the Melbourne, Melbourne Conference last June. Now Dion is mum to two gorgeous girls, Fraser and Evie, and wife to Mick. And today she'll be sharing with us how to juggle family life and a successful business. So fresh from a, holiday, a lovely holiday in Bali. Thanks for joining us, Dion. I'll put it over to you. Cheers. Thanks so much for that. And thanks so much, guys, for jumping on. I guess that I've had to become really quite um, scheduled. So my husband is FIFO and he's not your average FIFO who goes away for, you know, two weeks at a time or three weeks at a time. Um, he goes away for up to three months at a time and he may only be home for a week and then he might head away again for another three months. So in that time, I'm basically a single mum and we've got acreage. So... I've got a three-year-old and a five-year-old and I've got acreage to look after. So I need to make sure that I fit everything into my day. And, you know, we, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a professional procrastinator. So if I don't um, go to bed at night time with a to-do list, I'll wake up the next morning, I'll scroll on, scroll on Facebook every all day and I really don't get anything done. So what I've really implemented over the last 18 months is... A schedule and not a schedule that's not um, flexible but a schedule so that I know the things that I need to tackle every single day um, and one of those things at the moment that I've found is really really handy is I wake up around an hour or so before the girls get out of bed and I have one hour and I, I call that my hour of power or my focus hour and um, for me personally I've really started to concentrate recently on Facebook advertising and so in that one hour I'm reaching out to new like new inquiries and I'm doing all my follow-ups and that means then that I can then structure say three um, half an hour blocks or hour blocks during the day depending on how many inquiries that I've got and how many follow-ups that I do to make sure that that's a priority because it's really really easy for myself to get really busy and then forget about those high paying activities. And, you know, I have a really big dream with this business, as do most of us. And so if I get really busy and I forget about those high paying activities, I simply, you know, business isn't going to grow. So in that one hour every morning, I know that I'm going to spend that hour on the connections, the follow ups and the connections. And that's really important. So what I do is before I go to bed each night, um, I always plan my day. So I always sit, sit down and um, concentrate on what I need to do for the following day. So when I go to sleep, I know exactly what my tasks are for the next day. So you can do that. You can call it a to do list. You can, you know, write it into your DMO, um, whatever it is, it's a schedule and it's a schedule um, so that you've got those blocks. So, you know, I'm always blocking out between say 6am in the morning and 8.30 in the morning. That's my mumming time. You know, Michael's not here and if I don't spend quality time with the girls getting them ready in the morning, I can guarantee that we're going to be late. And I can also guarantee that the girls are going to fall apart because they haven't got my attention. So the mornings are my time with the girls. And then from 2.30 in the afternoon till 7.30 at night, that's my mumming time as well. So that's for me to make lunches, make dinner, you know, do homework, spend some quality time with them, jumping on the trampoline or whatever it may be. But I found by blocking out that, those times, my team knows that if it's urgent, they can get hold of me. But as we all know, there's nothing really urgent in Juice Plus, except if it's end of month and somebody's going for promotion. Um, so those, those, blocking out those hours throughout my day really made a big difference to how I was feeling because it's very easy to get overwhelmed, have all these messages, etc., to respond to and then get nothing done. So those hours I know that I'm not available and so my team knows that I'm not available and I can spend that quality time and really be present with my girls. So my schedule looks like every day it's blocked out at those hours and I, I'm happy to share my schedule. It's just an Excel spreadsheet that you guys can go off. I've actually converted over to an electronic pro program or an app on my phone where my team can schedule calls with me, etc. at, you know, by clicking a button basically rather than me going in backwards and forwards with messages. But that's something you don't need to worry about until you're getting to probably Q and NMD. And, you know, you're really dealing with a big team. Previous to that, an Excel spreadsheet, and I worked off that in a paper diary, and it worked really, really well. 
So I try to multitask everything and that's awesome. So, but then at the same time, you really need to have focus time. So in the morning, it's a focus. I'm focusing on one activity and throughout the day, I set myself um, focus period. So it might be I'm focusing on customer care or I'm focusing on um, qualification points or whatever it may be. But then at other times, I find it really important to uh, multitask. So for me personally, um, personal development is a massive part of this business. If you met me 18 months ago or two years ago when I first joined the business, I, I really struggled. Um, I had no self-belief in myself. So personal development has been a massive part of my journey. Um, and in that, I have really taken to the car. So when I'm in the car, turning off the radio, turning on personal development, you're sitting in the car doing nothing anyway. Um, we all know that it's basically one song and someone talks on the radio. So it's not like you can bop away and sing the whole time of your trip. So I listen to personal development in the car or I make phone calls in the car. So it might be that I touch base with my team um, and see how they're going. And I found it's really important just to touch base with my team and see how they are, not how their business is, but how they are. So that surprise phone call to say, hey, how's your week headed? Um, because if they're falling apart, then you can bet your bottom dollar that they're their business is falling apart. So my driving, I'll surprise my team with a call to say, hey, you know what, have a great day. If you're having a bad day, you know what, go outside and look up at the sky and refocus and then move forward. And so when I'm driving, it's either personal development or it's touching base with team members um, as a friend, you know, as that, that support network. Um, so with Michael away all of the time, there's obviously lots and lots of things for me to do. So I really do take these three things seriously. Do, dump, delegate. Um, something that I actually struggle with is delegating. I've always been someone who just likes to do it all myself. And, but you know what? We don't need to clean the house. Um, we don't need to mow the yard. So delegating that for me is a massive change. Our house is huge. So for me to mop and vacuum, it takes me a few hours. So... I get a cleaner in once a fortnight. They strip my bed, they wash my floors, they clean my bathroom. I always do a pre-clean clean. So, you know, they come in and they literally just clean. They're not tidying. But that makes me feel so much better. I can't work in mess and I can't work in clutter. So just to be on top of that and have someone change my sheets for me because that is absolutely a pet hate that I put off. I found, find that amazing. So then do, if you're, you might have a little task and you've been putting it off for two weeks. So that's mentally taking up space in your head for two weeks, thinking I've got to do that, I've got to do that, I don't want to do that. Just do it. Literally bite the bullet and say, today I'm going to do this, this and this. And if you can get those done first thing in the morning, you will feel amazing for the rest of the day and you will get so much more done. So a book that I read was called Eat That Frog and it spoke about doing the, I guess, the biggest task first or the task that you're putting off most the first. And that literally changed my business. You know, I don't, we all put off probably customer care, worried about what our customers are going to think and all the rest of it. What are they going to say? Do it first up in the morning. You'll probably suit your customers better as well. But if you do it first in the morning, you're fresh, you're focused, you're happy. And it really does, you know, make your day a lot easier. So do it, just get it over and done with. Dump it. If something's not really that important, just get rid of it you know, or delegate. And if it wasn't for those things, I would, you know, probably in a, be in a corner, you know, going, oh my gosh, I've got way too much to do, especially at the moment. So we're about to pack up our family and head off over to uh, Singapore with a one-way ticket. And, you know, I've got a lot to do in the next month. So those to-do lists each day and my schedules are really keeping me, me grounded and um, keeping me focused so I get everything done. So... Previous to doing juice class, I tried to be super mum and I tried to work full time, study an accounting degree and have two babies. So needless to say, I kind of fell apart in that, that time, but I learned something that I didn't realize would stay with me forever. So I would literally sit at my desk here and I would work for huge amounts of time without taking a break. And at the end of those you know, days or at the end of those hours, you get really um, unproductive and you're just wasting time. You're better off not sitting there. 
And I found something for me is to take a break, walk outside, put my feet on the grass and look up at the sky. And that really just recenters me and grounds me. And by doing that for five minutes, walking back inside, I feel like it's a brand new day. Um, grab a great big glass of cold water because cold water really just invigorates you. So taking a break, looking at the sky and having a big glass of cold water really just makes me go, ah, I'm ready to get back stuck, stuck back into it. Um, working from home, we all know that it's really easy to get tied up, I guess you could say, and work till God knows what hours of the day and night. So again, while I was studying, I got into a really bad habit of working from 7 p.m. till 2 or 3 a.m. every single night. And that's not healthy, especially when you're trying to look after yourself. So fixing working hours, and it's something that I have to do now, and I have to be really um, quite strict with it. So I try and be as present as a mum as possible. So I'm always volunteering in the classroom and going on excursions or doing things like that. So it's easy for me to pull it, put off all of my juice plus until 7 p.m. at night and then work till midnight. And I don't want to do that because then it makes me a tired, cranky mum at the next day. So make sure you give yourself a deadline. If it's 10 o'clock at night, 10.30 at night, 9 o'clock at night, make sure you know that between, say, 7 p.m., because my kids are in bed at 7, I've made lunches, I've cleaned up the kitchen, till 10 p.m., that's my working hours or less or more, whatever it is. And then at 10 p.m., I find that even if I am still sitting here and thinking that I'm working, I'm really just scrolling Facebook. So at 10 p.m., have an alarm set on your phone, have a 10-minute warning or a 15-minute warning and then decide that that's enough. I'm stepping away from the computer and it's time to go wind down, read a book, lay in bed, you know, do whatever, listen to some meditation or music. Um, but having those fixed working hours and that, again, all comes into scheduling your day and making sure that you're not working long, long hours but being really unproductive in those hours. Um, if you haven't conducted a time audit. It's really scary when you do, but absolutely one of the best things that I can recommend because you would be surprised how many hours you're scrolling on Facebook or all of those wasted 15 minute breaks, for instance. So, you know, you might leave early to go and pick up the kids, but then you sit in the car for 15, 20 minutes and scroll. That 15, 20 minutes, you could actually use as your customer care, or you could actually use that as, um, the time when you're going to sit there and schedule all your Facebook posts for the next day or for the next three days or whatever it may be. Um, and use technology to your advantage. So there's programs out there so that you can schedule your Facebook posts at two o'clock every afternoon or 2.30 every afternoon and they'll pop, pop up at the desired times each day. Um, so there's Hootsuite and there's Buffer. Personally, I prefer Buffer because Hootsuite pops all the photos into one photo album. Um, but use that to your advantage. The average person on Facebook won't realise that you're not actually live on Facebook posting it at that day. Um, and it definitely just takes some of the time off, you know, some of the pressure off you thinking, oh, I haven't posted on Facebook today, I've got to post on Facebook. Um, but the time audit I found was amazing. And then doing little things that are going to really help you throughout the week. So I found that I was spending quite a lot of time cooking even though I'm a terrible cook, but I'd spend quite a lot of time cooking throughout the week. So one thing I do is when I do the groceries, I usually do it on a Sunday morning. I go to the markets and I get all our fresh fruit and vegetables. I come home, I pre-chop it all and pop it in my Tupperware containers in the fridge. Then during the week when I may not have been as organised as I'd like to and I haven't thought of dinner, I don't have to stand there and prepare vegetables. They're all cut up, ready to go. So it's a matter of just quickly popping them out, throwing them in the thermomix or whatever it is, but being organised because that 15 minutes you're saving yourself could be 15 minutes of quality time with the kids. So my girls love a Sunday when we go to the markets, we get all the fresh fruits and vegetables and come home. I think they literally eat for the next four hours because it's all the fresh fruit and the berries and they think it's great. But they also think it's great because we're cutting it all up and I might make the kids snacks for the week in advance as well. So I like to make the kids lots of raw snacks for school. Um, and so we make it a, a morning thing on a Sunday morning. We have the music on, we dance around the house, we cut up the vegetables, we make our snacks for the week. And I'll always throw some of the snacks in the freezer. Um, being 
you know, by myself, I can't always rely on someone else to help me. Um, and if I'm really unorganized and let's face it, we all have times where we come home and the week doesn't go to plan or the, the few days hasn't gone to plan. The house looks like a bomb site and the food may not be organized. If I know I've got snacks in the freezer for the girls lunches, I know that I can pull them out the night before and pop them in the fridge. They'll be great for the lunches. And at least I'm not giving them lots of packaged foods. So, We've made that a real family event on a Sunday morning and the kids love it. So that helps us a lot. So I spoke about doing personal development in the car and phone calls, etc. in the car. The other thing I could really recommend is turn your TV off. Um, turn the TV off at 7 p.m. at night. And if you just turned your TV off each night, you could totally build your business in those hours. Um, you know, it's about... I guess not being sitting there just watching TV all night and connecting with people. You don't need to get back to them that night or they don't need to get back to you, but you might start those conversations ready for the next day. Um, I spoke about before like having blocks of time. So I know I reply to all my messages on my Facebook uh, business page, you know, between five and six in the morning. Then I try and reply about 9.30 once I get home from the school drop off in the gym. And then at one o'clock in the afternoon, and I usually spend another half an hour or so in, at seven, seven ish at night. And so I know that because I've got those scheduled times, I always get to keep on top of my messages and it won't go three days down the track. And I think I haven't actually spoken to any of my business potentials because then you're just throwing away money. You know, and the last thing we want to do is really throw away money. Um, at the beginning of the month, sit down with your team or just sit down with yourself and work out your goals because that'll give you an idea of where you need to spend your energy for the week. Um, so I know that, you know, this month I've got a team member who is aiming for Q. So she's going to need quite a lot of my, my attention this month. So if I know at the very beginning of the month who I need to speak with, who I'm going to be focusing my energy on, it means that I can not forget everybody else because you're absolutely there, but I know that these guys' goals, they're not really that big this month and they're going to be fine. I need to focus my energy on here or I've signed up seven teammates or whatever it is and I need to focus on getting them started strong. So really having those goals set out so that you just list brain powers use basically. Um, I, I guess that um, we can get really caught up on social media and social media has been something for me that I've had to really focus on for quite a long time um, because I wasn't a fan of Facebook or social media when I first started in the business. And there's so many different things to social media. There's groups, there's business advertising, there's Instagram, there's Facebook lives. Master a strategy and don't try and go and, um, I guess, master seven strategies or four strategies all at the same time. Because what you'll find you're doing is you're spending all this time and you're doing half of them half-heartedly, you know, you're not really mastering anything. So I think it takes 90 days. I've read that somewhere where it takes 90 days to master a strategy. So decide that, you know, tomorrow I'm going to set my strategy and for the next 90 days, I'm really going to focus on Facebook Lives. So Facebook Live for me has definitely been a big game changer um, and has grabbed a lot of attention. Um, it's very uncomfortable for me. I absolutely absolutely hated, hated them at the very beginning, but they've definitely changed my business. So I probably three months ago decided that Facebook Live was going to be my strategy and I concentrated on that. I set my schedule so that I knew that I needed to do two to three a week um, and then maybe I'll throw the odd one here or there. But two to three a week, I knew that I did them, I think it was Tuesdays and Fridays and it was in my diary. So it was just like a business appointment. I treated it like a business appointment. And so therefore my um, potential audience on Facebook kind of knew that I was about to go live on a Tuesday morning. And that really increased the number of um, people who used to jump on. So, you know, setting that strategy, mastering that strategy. And then once you've got that in your schedule and you know, for instance, Tuesday and Friday mornings, you go live. You've then got other time that you can then go and really um, put yourself into events or groups, okay? So, but if you master that, you know, getting those time slots into your diary, it really makes a difference. 
So with Michael being away all the time, I need to make sure that I'm present for the girls. So on a Sunday afternoon, we do an event between, or it starts at 3 p.m. every Sunday afternoon. So I make sure for the couple of hours prior to that, I'm really present with the girls. We have loads and loads of fun. And then we have the conversation. Okay, mummy has got to go to work now. So I need you girls to be on your best behaviour. And we've moved the event now to um, a local hotel. And after the event, if you guys are really great for mummy, we're going to go and have a family dinner. So then the girls have got something to look forward to. And it works with a small event every week. And it can work well when you're in a 90-day game plan, for instance, when it's like, you know what, we're counting down. Mummy's got lots of work to do for the next 90 days. But once this is over, we've got a goal and we're going to go to... Dream World or Movie World or we've been counting it down to our holiday in Bali. Um, really setting those goals because the last thing you want is that your kids resent or your partner resents the business. Um, so I've obviously got a bit of a different situation with Michael being away, but making sure in your schedule you've got time for your partner. You've got time for date nights or you've got time just to talk. For me, Michael's in Singapore, so he's two hours behind. So I know that about 10 o'clock at night, Everything gets turned off and I have the next hour chatting to Michael and it makes him feel important and know that he's really important part of my, my life because otherwise this business can just take it over. Um, so, you know, sometimes it might be earlier, sometimes it might be later. Sometimes we might, we might only chat for about five minutes. But it's knowing that at that time he's got my undivided attention because a FIFO relationship, you've got to make sure you've got time for each other um, or any relationship. But especially with FIFO, you really need to have that communication down pat. So going back to Facebook, it's really easy that you get overwhelmed. You know, when emails first became the, the method of communication in offices, it's really easy to step away from your emails and come back and think, oh my gosh, I've got a hundred emails to um, like respond to, or be sitting there trying to do something and all you hear is bing, bing, bing. It drives you crazy. It's constantly distracting you. So something that I found amazing is turning off the notifications on my Facebook. Okay, because if you don't have those notifications turned off, my phone would have been buzzing constantly while I'm on this call and I would have been getting distracted. Um, so turning off those notifications because then in your hour of power, you'll, you know, your hours when you're not getting distracted, you're getting that quality work done. And that, I guess, goes for your kids as well. So, um, you know, if I have a Zoom and I actually did a Facebook Live yesterday, this does not always go to plan. But if I have a Zoom call, I do one on a Monday, Mummy's on a mission. And Evie, I only have a 10-minute snippet that I need to close the event. And it seems that Evie wants to throw a tantrum in that 10 minutes. So have a plan in place. So, you know, have a special toy that, or a new toy, whether it's a new colouring in or whether it's an iPad that they're only allowed to pay for that 10 minutes and they look forward to it. Really have something that in that 10 minutes, they don't want to distract you. Um, because all they're wanting to distract you for is a bit of attention. Okay, so you need to, I guess, focus on when you've got those things to do and you've got kids, you need to come up with a way that you can distract them for that 10 minutes and you can just get that phone call done or that Zoom event done because there is nothing worse. I know that I can recall at the beginning I wasn't on top of this and having to lock my bedroom door and lock my bathroom door and going into the bathroom to try and do a three-way call for a team member because I'd lined it up at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And the house had just broken down. I think it was a Thursday or Friday. I had tired children. And it was that breaking point that I thought, I can't do this. There's going to be times when you've got to make the exception. But I realised at that point that I can't just expect the kids to be pushed away when they're wanting my attention and they've been at school all day. So really, Celine used to speak about it all the time, having that... Um, that distraction set up for them so that they've got something to look forward to as well. So when you're juggling a business, and a lot of people don't realise this, they, they think that I've just been a stay-at-home mum, but the majority of my business grew last year when Michael was away for nearly six months straight and I decided still, like, I was crazy and decided I needed to go back to work. I didn't think that this was going to be enough for me to keep me busy. So I went back to work three times a week, three days a week. Michael was away and 
in that period, I think, I guess my life kind of fell apart a little bit, but I also found that super, super important to get my schedules in place because it's really easy to go, I'm so busy, I've got so much to do, but you forget to focus on the high paying activities. So your high paying activity t activities are going to be connecting with your prospects. So, you know, making new connections, making new friendships. Um, Follow-ups, you know, most of the time we, we forget to follow up people and that's so detrimental to our business because I don't know how many times I respond mentally to a text message or an email or Facebook message and I literally just forget to hit send or I type it in draft, the kids distract me and I hit to, forget to hit send. So focusing on that, making sure that's a priority is key to your business. And it was really a, um, I guess, a changing point in my business when I, I made that real commitment that, you know, that was going to be a high priority. Um, inviting to events. We hear it all the time. We always hear that, you know, events are the lifeblood of our business. Um, and for me, it's making sure that my children are a part of those events. Very rarely on a Sunday do I actually get to present without Fraser or Evie drawing on the other side of the whiteboard or, you know, carrying one of them. And, you know, a lot of people have said, I didn't actually think I could do this business until I saw that you did it with your children by your side. And I think that that's key. I've got a large team of FIFO mums or just mums in general. So the more that we can incorporate the children, the more that we can um, not use them as an excuse but use them as our reason, it's imperative. That really will change your business. Um, working with your team. You've got to make sure you connect with your team. Um, you know, yes, it's great. Yes, you want them to, I guess, follow what Eric Worre says and they don't need you. But two years into this business, I still speak to Jess every single day. You know, if I've had a face down moment or I've had a win, it may not be a half an hour conversation, but it'll be, it might be a 20 second voice message that I send her through Facebook Messenger. Um, it might be a, hey, I've got this situation arise. These are the two outcomes that, or these are the two ways that I think I can tackle it. What would you recommend? Because just bouncing that idea off someone can literally save you an hour of sitting here pondering over what am I going to do? It's about time management and really moving forward and making sure that you're not wasting time. And I guess the big thing for me that I've really invested a lot into myself is personal development. Um, I'm, I love reading, but I struggle to find the time that I can just sit down and focus with Michael away and having to juggle everything. So, you know, audio books. If you can't read the physical book, listen to the audio, listen to lots of podcasts. And I find that if I listen to an audio book, then read the physical book, it sinks in so much more for me. Um, so, you know, it's definitely, they're the five things I guess that I find really, really important in this business. And if I don't do those, my business isn't going to grow. And as I said before, I've got massive dreams for my team and I've got massive dreams for me. So I need to focus on those things because if I'm not growing, my business isn't growing. So personal development, especially is very, very high on my priority list. So I guess that time is our most precious asset. Okay, time with our family, time with our friends, having fun, or as Brene Brown speaks about, you know, really playing, being in that state where you don't want that moment to end, being in a state of, um, you know, just having fun. So, you know, that's really important. So we can, it's very easy to get bogged down. I've got so much to do. This is my schedule. I've got to do this, this, and this. But don't forget to enjoy yourself because if you're not enjoying yourself, you're never, ever going to grow your business. And you'll literally burn yourself into a ground, into the ground and you'll fall apart. So taking that time out, whether it's to get a facial, a massage, have a coffee with a friend and not talk juice plus, taking the kids to the beach, um, whatever it may be, make sure you schedule that into your diary as well. Or you know what? Sometimes throw the diary out, throw the schedule out and spontane you know, pick up the kids and take them over to the beach spontaneously. I know that my girls, if I pick them up from school and not take swimmers or anything and say, we're going to the beach and they'll be like, but mum, we don't have swimmers. So swim in your knickers, have fun. You know, like keep that element of unknown because the kids are going to respond so much easier to you. 
I've always said, and I, a few people have sort of looked at me funny, but our kids' behavior is a direct reflection of us. So if I wake up grumpy, if I wake up tired, if I'm short fused because I'm running late, my kids are going to be exactly the same. And there's nothing worse than a grumpy parent and, a grump and grumpy children. So if I'm in an awesome headspace, you can bet your bottom dollar my girls are going to be happy and they're going to be in an awesome headspace and, you know, work well with me. So something that I'll just leave you on this. So that's something that I did that absolutely changed our mornings and really helped our household was turn music on in the morning. Make a bit of a dance party before you go to school because if you set that headspace early on in the morning, your day will be so much better. And, you know, now the kids will come home from school and say, Mum, can we turn the music on? Absolutely. Because we know that that is something that puts us, you know, I guess it makes us happy as a family. So I hope you took something from all of that. There's lots of little things that I've sort of learned over time. Um, even, you know, on my desk, like if you can see here, I have a number of trays. Rather than walking in and throw something on my, my desk all the time, I have a tray, you know, follow-ups, customers, tax, bills, and I just throw the paperwork into the desired tray, the tray that works best. And I know that any given time I can find that until I've got a chance to file it. And on the very top, I've got my product so that when I'm about to sit down and present a Zoom for a business opportunity, I know that I've got my products there at the, my fingertips and I don't have to go running back out into the kitchen to grab my products. Um, they're the empty containers. The kids are not going to steal the chews because they're just empty packets. I've got any scripts that I need there and um, they're all at my fingertips and it really does just take that pressure off. So thanks so much for listening, everybody. Wonderful. Thanks, Dion. I have taken so many notes personally, so I'm definitely taking away the do, dump and delegate with me and the food prep with the dancing. We, we go to the markets too, so I'm now going to be putting the music on all the time. Um, uh, I think somebody said, can we have a look at your desk file or something? Let me have a look. Uh, yep, so I've just got a number, and you can kind of see it, a number of trays. I can probably turn it sideways. So a number of trays on my desk and they just sit there and I've got tags on the front of them. And so, you know, I know that this tray is for follow-ups or this tray is for tax or this tray is for customers and kids artwork because I don't know about you guys, but I end up with this pile of kids artwork and I'm like, what am I going to do with it? So I pop it in there and then I can sort it into the keep pile and into the the file in the, the bin pile where the kids can't see. Um, but I keep it on my desk so that I know that any given time, if I've got 15 minutes spare where I may not be presenting yet on Zoom, I can turn my video off and I can quickly clear out a tray and scan it into my computer. So I love, I hate paper, I hate clutter. So I have a scanner next to my computer and I just scan them in and save all of my paperwork on the computer. It means I can access Dropbox when I'm out as well. So maybe a little bit more time consuming than keeping the paper, but it saves you so much more time and space down the track. Hope that helps. Anybody else have any more questions for Dion? No, I think so, thanks. There we go. Well, all good. Thank you so much, Dion. It's been an absolute pleasure. Good luck over in Singapore. Hope you have one good time and I'm sure we'll be hearing lots from you soon. Okay. You will. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks, guys.